Well, if you're an avid DIYer and you happen to have a garage, you can bet there are a lot of projects that get worked on in that space. But in the winter, that gets tougher as the garage is the one place under your roof which is not heated. Yeah, the garage is definitely the great untapped space for like a workshop or a hobby area or a lot of other things. But heat is all that really stands between using that space year round and not. So adding garage heat, pretty popular project, especially this time of year. And there are a few options to consider. So let's walk you through it. First up, forced air garage heaters. Now, these are great because they deliver instant heat, just like a regular furnace. And they can be sized for any size garage or space and any temperature swing. You know, if you live in the north, you're going to have a much colder space to to heat than if you live in the south. Now, they work a lot like your house furnace. They heat the air, and then they use a fan to distribute that warm air throughout the space. They do need a gas line, though, and an outlet. And they should usually be mounted up high, like in a corner and blow downward. Now, they come in a variety of sizes, but a good rule of thumb is this. For a two-car garage, you need about a 45,000 BTU unit. And for a three-car garage, you need a 60,000 BTU unit. And by the way, those are big numbers. When you think about the size of a furnace, the average furnace for a house is going to be under 100,000 BTUs. So you're talking about like 50%, 60% of what you need to heat in the entire house. So this is something that you do need that much power, but you're not going to use it a lot because it gets pretty expensive. Yeah, now there's also infrared garage heaters. That's another option. And these radiate the heat rather than use a conventional blower fan. Now, they work well when you're only looking to heat a specific area as opposed to an enclosed space. Infrared heaters heat an object first rather than the air, and they can provide uniform and consistent heating rather than dissipating the heat associated with blower fans. Now, Tom, aside from adding the heat, I mean, these rooms might not be well insulated to begin with. So is it a good idea to even just start there and check? Well, definitely. I mean, you have to know that the only wall that's required to be insulated is going to be the wall between the house and the garage. If you got a detached garage, of course, you're going to have no insulation. And sometimes, even when you have an attached garage, I've seen builders that will drywall the exterior walls of the garage, and you just don't know that there's no insulation inside of that. So you got to check. And the other thing that you can do is you can beef up your garage door. Now, most are not insulated, but you can add foam panels to inside, just inside the door. You can glue foam panels, cut them to fit and add them to the inside of the door. They don't add much weight, and they definitely will warm up that door. And then check the weather stripping around the outside. These are things that you can improve at a very, very marginal cost. 